welcome, I am Tamara and this is my dream sewing room. Let me show you around. So this is the first side of the room that I want to show you. As you can see, to my right I have my cutting table. To my left is the dresser that you'll see in the background of my videos. That is where I keep most of my fabric. And then behind me is obviously the window, some beautiful curtains that I sewed, and my sewing table. This particular sewing table I got from my grandmother. Now this sewing table, it's not meant to be a sewing table, but the nice thing is it is shorter than the average height of a table, which was perfect for me to be able to sit at a sewing machine and be sitting at the correct height so that my shoulders and my back don't start hurting over a period of time. So I actually attached this table to the wall using a little L bracket. That way the table doesn't shimmy and shake when my sewing machine is working when I'm using it. So I've got it attached to the back of the table and to a stud in the wall and it has kept it so nice and secure. And then I've got a little tray here where I keep all of my basting pins. I keep this on my sewing table as well. At times it'll just display some really nice helpful books but what I love about this little stand is it's metal so you can put little magnets on it and a lot of times we end up with patterns that we find online and we print out on printer paper. So what I love about this is I can just magnetize that to my stand and then I can still follow the pattern with ease. So I highly recommend getting yourself one of these. So the next thing I wanted to show you was where I keep my pail. I know my garbage pail should not be that interesting, but I am really excited to show you. I keep it on this little stool here and the reason for that is it makes it a really nice height for myself to just reach on over, throw those threads away, or scoop up all of my scraps off of my cutting table and I just slide it right on into this bin. Another thing that I have is this little bin right here and I keep all of my scraps in there but I have to tell you I have a great system for scraps so when I'm showing you how I organize my fabric I will show you how I keep most of my scraps together so this bin really does not fill up that quickly because I put most of my scraps away in a different way. This sewing machine here is the one that I use all the time. However, and I think you can see it in the shot, I have this pink sewing machine. So I find that when you are teaching young ones how to sew, it is good to just have a simple sewing machine that does not overwhelm them. And I find that this one, as fancy as it is, is actually too overwhelming to learn how to sew on. And I do keep a few more things near my sewing machine when I am sewing. One is obviously a little bobbin catcher. I do keep all of my all-purpose thread bobbins in here. The specialty threads that I have, I'll actually keep with those spools themselves. I also have this little kit, which I highly recommend you check out. It comes with a really nice long brush so that you can clean out your sewing machine because you know you're supposed to do that often when you are sewing. I also highly recommend that you get yourself a sewing stiletto. So many people don't know about these things and they are the best way to keep your fingers free and clear from that sewing machine needle. And finally, I keep this little tray near me by my sewing machine and even though my sewing machine has particular feet, I do keep spare little feet like a walking foot and a ruffler foot in this little bag here so that I can just reach to the the sewing feet that I need when I need them. Now that is almost everything that I want to show you on this side of my sewing space but I did want to point out that I hung up three beautifully embroidered pieces that were done by my grandmother and given to me when I was a little girl. I had them reframed and I just think they suit my dream sewing space perfectly. Now on to the back wall. Future Tamara here. Yes, this is where we end up at the end of my sewing tour. I just wanted to pop in here and tell you that all of the items that I show you in my sewing room, I am going to have linked in the description down below. So please check that out. That supports me and allows me to continue on doing this channel. I appreciate you. And now let's get back to the sewing tour. So this is my back wall. To the right is my sewing machine. To the left is a closet that I have very nice 
storage in. And this back wall is the wall that you will see in most of my tutorials. On the wall itself, I have three wire racks and those wire racks I got at Ikea. They are perfect for storing your quilting rulers and scissors and I even have these adorable little bins here to hold my little water dispensers or misters for my pressing. I've got my pressing station here, my round cutting mat here, and of course Every sewing room needs a little cake stand with some jelly rolls on it. I keep all of my gray cream white thread on my grandma's sewing machine here. And then I have to show this to you. Can you see what it says? It says, sorry, I don't hem pants. And this is a tailor's clapper, which I use to press my seams. So you can find many tailor's clappers out there, but I think this is the best one. I mean, don't we all wanna say that? So another splurge in my sewing room is actually my iron itself. This is an Oliso iron and I love it so much. It is big, it is actually quite hefty. So if you don't want a heavy one, then maybe don't get this one. But what I love is it has these little feet in it. So if you're a quilter and you're doing a lot of pressing and pressing seams open, it is perfect because it just will pop itself up. Let me show you. So you're pressing a seam, it pops itself up, you grab it again, you press that next seam, and of course when you're not doing pressing, then I just keep it off to the right of my pressing station and it'll turn off, I believe, after 30 minutes. And even if it's knocked over, it'll turn off almost immediately. Another thing that you probably don't see very often because it's off of camera is a little egg wire bin that I keep to the left of my dresser. And that bin has bolts of fabric and solid fabrics. So I wrap all of my fabrics up on comic book boards and the reason why I use comic book boards specifically is because they are acid free. So they're not going to affect your fabric over time. Now it is time to show you what is actually in my dresser drawers. I am really excited about this part because this is where I keep all of my fabric, mostly cotton fabrics because I do beginner sewing tutorials and cotton fabrics are the best for that. I also enjoy quilting and that is cotton fabrics as well. So in this top drawer here, it's not that exciting. I keep camera equipment. Then in this bottom cupboard here, when you open it, it actually has two drawers. So in the first drawer, I keep all of my Christmas fabrics. I like to have them sorted separately because then when you are doing a Christmas project, I can just pull this drawer out and I can see what I have and I can get creating right away. Something I do want to show you that is in my Christmas stash is this little pack of jelly roll here. Now they don't call it a jelly roll, but this one is a strip pack and I love it. It's by Annie's. Annie's does different subscriptions and this particular subscription is obviously for the strips. You can do uh, charm packs. I believe you can also do like fat quarter packs and I will link to them in the description down below. And if you're like me and you do comic book boards as well for all of your fabric, then you will also appreciate a flat jelly roll. I also have this adorable little charm pack. It is so pretty that I don't want to just do any project with it. So if you have any ideas on what I could use this charm pack for, I am all ears. Please let me know in the comments down below. Now for the bottom drawer, that is all of the fabric that I got from my grandmother. Now should I show you the middle section or to the left first? I think I'm going to go to the left. So in this drawer here, I literally keep extra comic book boards for future fabrics that I might purchase. This is where I keep all of my fat quarters. So if I have a specific fat quarters that maybe belong with Christmas, I'll put them over there. But if they're just a set of beautiful fat quarters, I shove them in here because there are so many projects that I make that just need a fat quarter of fabric. So I like having all of that sorted together. And then the bottom drawer, I keep some random stuff. So I've got some Insulbrite Sherpa, and then I've got some of my canvas fabrics. I don't have a large stash of canvas fabrics, but I just ordered some more because I really want to get into more projects that use canvas fabric. So look out for those tutorials coming soon. And then finally, I have my three drawers here. This top drawer is essentially a sewing junk drawer. 
So I keep things like quilting slash gardening gloves in here. I will keep a lot of scrap bindings in here as well. Some cork. I still don't know what I'm gonna use it for. Some mesh for bag making. And in this little bin, I keep all of my triangle cast offs because I have a good project planned for these. I just have to find the time to film it. Oh, and I have another Annie's Creative subscription box and it actually comes as a project. So it came with all of the fabrics that I need to do a quilted pillow as well as the instructions. So again, I'm gonna link to Annie's subscription boxes because I highly recommend that you check them out. They have so many cool subscription boxes. They even have a subscription box for like woodworking with your little ones. I am telling you, they have so many. And I have some matte vinyl fuse that I keep in here. I used it in a tutorial where I did a diaper change pad. So if you're interested in sewing something like that, this is where I keep all of my fabrics mostly sorted in rainbow order. A few I have sorted by categories if they all match. And I love keeping my fabric on comic book boards because now I can see them all beautifully, but I like to keep them in the drawer because then they're hidden away from sunlight So they're not going to start fading over time, which is something important you need to keep in mind Another thing that I quite enjoy is if I look at specific fabrics I can actually tell how much I have now That's something that maybe will take time to figure out But I can just look and by the thickness of the comic book board itself. I'll know. Oh, that's three yards That's four yards that's two yards and most of them are one yard pieces of fabric and I am gonna link to a tutorial on how I actually fold my comic book boards how I clip them and everything that you need to know especially if you're storing them in drawers like this in here I keep all of my children's prints to the right and then on the left I have a little section of panels and I have my Halloween fabric now my Halloween fabric I don't have too much so it didn't need its own little drawer like my Christmas fabric, but I do keep all of the scraps for my Halloween fabric in a specific Ziploc. I do the same for my Christmas fabric. That way I know if I'm doing a project where I can find smaller bits for smaller projects. So I just keep that right next to the Halloween fabric. And then I have this basket here and inside this basket is another basket. So this is all my Tula pink scraps. I like to keep that all together. And then I have this bin here and they're larger scraps that I don't want to get rid of, but they're too small to fit on a comic book board. Now, here is my trick for you for scraps. Instead of throwing them in your scrap bin, what you do is you will keep all the little bits and then if you have enough fabric that you can still wrap it around a comic book board, you will take all of those scraps, you will lay them flat and you will put them within that comic book board as you're rolling it up. The reason why you do that is when you're pulling out a fabric for a new project, you might only need a small amount. And then when you open that up, you can see, oh, I was gonna do a handle anyways. This is the perfect little scrap for that project. So I find that it is a nicer way for me to sort my scraps. I hope that you enjoy that tip and I hope that you let me know if you start doing that. All right, let's move on to my closet. Hey. You enjoying this tour so far? If you are, I just wanna ask if you will hit subscribe if you like beginner sewing tutorials, and if you shop through the links in the description down below, I greatly appreciate it because that supports my channel and it really is at no extra cost to you. So if you do that, I greatly appreciate it. Either way, let's get back to the tour. Now on to this wall. This wall is where I have my closet and there's a little section before off of the camera is just the door to my hallway. So after I took the doors off of this closet, I had it painted, had it painted, I did the painting, added shelving with my husband and found bins that I could store all of the necessary items, which I will show you in a second. I first want to point out the hope chest in the bottom of the dresser that is surrounded by bolts of batting. I've got different interfacings around it. I've got pillow inserts shoved in behind it. So it's not the prettiest look, but you got to put that stuff somewhere. And in the hope chest itself, I keep larger chunks of fabric. Fabric that's not cotton fabric, fabric I'm not using at the moment, fabric I got from my mom, and I'm not willing to get rid of it. I have some ideas for it, but I'm not quite there. And 
in the bottom of the hope chest I have a little drawer and that's where I keep smaller scraps of interfacing. Now as you can see on top of the hope chest I have a nice basket full of jeans and they are mostly my husband's jeans because he is really good at putting holes in his clothing and he is over six feet so his jeans are good chunks of fabric and I am not willing to get rid of those. So they are there for future projects. And then in this cute little bin here, let me show you. I just keep scraps of fabric that I've used for previous projects. So anything that is essentially on both sides of batting, interfacing, or foam, I throw in here for future smaller bag projects. Hopefully I'll get around to those someday. And then you might be able to spot it, but I have this beautiful little embroidered picture here in the bottom of the closet that my aunt made for me when I was a little girl. And it is just too pretty to keep hidden away, so I have it hung there, along with a few other items on the sides of the closet that are special to me. Now for what are on the shelves. So up here you will see I have a Kenmore sewing machine that I do need to get fixed. It was my mother-in-law's sewing machine and it only sews forwards. It does not sew backwards at the moment. And then this sewing machine here was my first sewing machine. It was a gift from my mom for a wedding present. And this sewing machine died on me fairly recently, which is why I now have the other brother sewing machine you saw earlier in this video. And this sewing machine, I cannot get fixed. I tried. It's com computer components that uh, aren't being made anymore, which is really unfortunate. But this sewing machine, if I ever just want to sew backwards, it sews backwards. <laughs> Up above, I just keep a ton of blankets that I have made in the past, as well as other uh, pillows and blankets that I might use for quilts one day for the backs of quilts. And now for my bins. Should I pull them down and show them to you individually? Okay. I'll do it. This bin has manuals in it, not that exciting. This bin has craft supplies, so essentially anything that I can still use with fabric but doesn't really have a spot. So items like tie-dye, rope, beads, that sort of a thing. This bin has lace and I was given a ton of lace from my grandma's stash, so I have plenty of lace for future tutorials. And in this bin I have patterns. So most of these patterns are clothing patterns that I would not fit because they are my mom's old patterns, but they are just way too pretty. Let me see if I can find one. Like, how cute is that? So I just keep these because they are inspiration and I just can't get rid of them. They're just too pretty. I do have a few quilt patterns in here. I also have a pattern to a different subscription, Sewers Club, if you're interested. I also have a link to them. This particular club is actually great for beginner sewers because they will send you all the fabric you need for a beginner's sewers project. So I think that they're a pretty cool subscription service as well. And in this bin, I have ribbon. It's a bit of a mess of a bin. And most of the ribbons in this bin came also from my grandma. She loved collecting craft supplies. And to be honest, she was probably the crafter in the family that gave me the crafting bug because my mother, not a crafter. In this bin are zippers. So I just have a ton of different sizes of zippers and uh, different lengths and different styles for any zipper project I might be working on. Now this bin is a special bin. This bin I actually keep future projects in. Now you know when you go to the fabric store and you have a project in mind and you buy enough fabric specifically for that project? I put that fabric in this bin. That fabric does not get comic book boarded and put in my regular stash. And the reason for that is we often forget why we bought the fabric. So I'll keep it in this bin and then I will have little sticky notes on top of the fabric writing what I had planned for that project so that if <laughs> I forget, at least I've written it down. And finally, this bin is bag supplies. It is fairly empty because that is a new hobby of mine and I am slowly collecting items. All right, so you would think I would be done showing you what is on this side of the room, but I am not because I have one more thing that is kind of off of the camera. 
I'm gonna lift it up and it is my sewing box. So as you can see right here, this is a fun little sewing box. It is my mother's sewing box that I snagged out of her sewing room. And in it, I keep all of my random colored threads. I have Velcro in here. I have different buttons and pins in here. So this is my cutting station. And now I do have a secret that I have yet to share with you about my cutting table. And if you hang on, I am about to get to that little tip. So as far as this cutting table is concerned, I keep a nice large cutting mat on it. It is 22 inches by 34 inches. Yep. <laughs> and it is the perfect size for me. I love it on this particular cutting table because I can spin it with ease. And that's the reason why I have this nice little shelf attached to the wall, keeping all of my other little items up and away so that when I'm spinning my cutting mat, that it doesn't knock anything over. And then I have this nice heavy jar here to keep all of my little staples. You know, you've got your friction pens, your Ulfa cutter, and my little glue stick. And in the bottom of all three of these, I've actually lined them with felt. And the reason for that is it just protects all of the things that I'm throwing in here. I also have another little bag here, which I will be doing a tutorial on how to make these bags soon enough. And I just keep my little clips in there. Now, honestly, if you're beginner sewer and you are wondering what in the world you should start with, I highly recommend you start by going on Amazon and buying yourself a whole bunch of these clips. All right, you guys, we are almost there. I want to show you what is underneath my cutting table. But first, I just want to talk quickly about how I made this table skirt. I used a ruffler foot to create these pretty little pleats. And then I just sewed a Velcro strip onto the fabric itself. And then the opposite side of the Velcro, I staple gunned to the bottom of this table. And that allowed me to attach my nice table skirt onto that. Underneath my table, it is not as pretty. Well, let me show you. All right, so I have bins, I have different boxes, I have pillow inserts, I have old projects that I've made. I've got so much stuff that I just, I can't get rid of, but I don't know where to put. So it's just out of sight, out of mind under here. And finally, my secret sauce to this table. I'm gonna move over. All right, can you see? I think you can see, okay is, and I will have these linked in the description down below, furniture risers. They are perfect for your cutting tables. These were not that pricey and they actually came in two different sizes. I believe these are a three inch and then the other one might've been a four or five inch. I don't have them to show you because I gifted them to my tall sewing friend so that her cutting table can be a nice height as well. If there was anything that I did not show you that you are interested in, please leave me a comment down below and I will let you know what it is. And if you enjoy beginner sewing projects, check out my channel, I have a ton of tutorials for you and I am always coming up with new ideas. I hope that you guys will subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye for now!